Hey, you guys. Uh, I want to welcome you guys to another edition of Woodcarver's Corner. Um, this edition of Woodcarver's Corner, we're going to call the Vikings. And we're going to do it a little bit different, too. Um, we're going to take you guys down and show you a few of the Vikings. Over the years, I've carved probably at least 10 different Viking situations or more. Of course, some of you that's taken my classes in the past, remember I had a small 10-inch Viking bust that I used to teach in the classes all the time. This particular Viking um, was out of basswood. And just a little story about it. I had actually started in a basswood log. And it developed a bad split or a crack in the back because it was in a log form. And one day I give up on that. You know, over the years of carving, I've found out that you're more apt to sell a wall hanging than you are a large bust or something that sets on the table. People just don't seem to have room for something like that in their home. So anyway, um, we are planning on taking you guys on a, a little adventure. I did want to point out, notice how I'd hollowed the back out and I'd taken a piece out up here. Well, that was because this piece weighed probably 15 pounds or something. And to hang it on the wall, you know, you don't want that much weight. So I did end up um, hollowing the back of this piece out. Um, I want to talk about design for just a second. Um, I got two different sketch pads here because the other night I wanted to, instead of just doing a straight stiff Viking bust or a mask like that one or something, I thought, let's see if we can add a little bit of um, action, let's say, to this deal. So my first sketch was kind of simple. I had a shield, a Viking, the weapon, and a horse, uh, just like that. And there was things I liked about every one of these sketches. In other words, here, I'm bridging the weapon behind his head. And um, this is only going to be out of a three-inch piece of butternut. Uh, and I like that. This was the original sketch that I'd done. And I kind of liked it because I put the weapon down, touching the, the shield area and the back of his head. So that way the weapon wouldn't get broke off. But I still didn't have enough action in my drawings. So then I went to our bigger chalkboard. Let's start with the first few I did, and then I'll show you. Uh, well, let's just start here. This is good enough. Look at there, we got the uh, original doggy prints signed by Bluey on here. <laughs> but um, I thought, you know, what if we put some action and made a composition out of this piece? So this was one of the drawings of Viking. Now, I didn't like it that there's nothing bridging the weapon up here because that's more apt to get broke off. Uh, we're going to talk about our piece of wood here in a second that I'm going to use. But keep in mind that I got the grain of the wood going up and down like that. Okay, um, this was the second sketch I'd done. And it was the same way. I kind of liked it, except I wanted to do a bare arm and part of a bare chest on this guy. And so with the uh, shield in the way, I was kind of covering some of that up. And I also thought, boy, this sticking up here with the grain going like this is going to get broke off unless I bridge it somehow. Now, the whole idea, I was trying to get a triangular shape. Let's look at the... Oh, that's the one I just showed. Now, hang on. Let's flip her over. 
I drew this thing three or four or five times. And believe it or not, I still haven't landed on one that I really like. But now here, I've got it where I'm going to show the main body of the Viking. We're getting a little action with the cape flowing off the back. I raised the horse's head up a little bit from the other drawing. And I wanted something going on, so I might even do these horse legs and stuff. These are just concepts. When you're first trying to come up with a um, subject, you guys, first of all, you got to have the piece of wood that it's going to fit in. You might notice I got a line drawn down along the side of here. Well, that's because that's how wide this piece of wood I have is. So, and the other thing I got to keep in mind is this is going to get awfully heavy on the wall. Let's see. Um, I think I got one here where the horse, yeah. This is about the third time I drew it. And see, I put the horse head up more. But somehow I'm losing this triangular concept in there. So between, I've got, what, five, six drawings done of this thing. I like things about some of them, but I don't like things about the others. So let's, let's talk about the piece of wood that we're going to use. Um, I have had this piece of wood for, I'm going to say, 20 years. Uh, I've got three of them. One of them is a four inch thick wide. And these are just a little over three inches thick, you know, thick. I mean, and they're all about 16 inches across, which if you get to thinking about it, this was a mighty big uh, butternut log. And uh, I did do a little tasting on this the other day. Uh, and ooh, look at that. Now, I probably told you guys in previous videos that butternut is actually my go-to wood, favorite wood. And uh, anyway, the only thing here, I wanted to talk about the grain for a second. The grain is going this direction, the rings of the trees, you know. Of course, the grain of the wood is up and down, but the rings are going this way. So this would end up being the front of my subject. Now, I did find that there's a knot right here, and I definitely don't want that in his arm or something. So I may end up having to cut this knot off and starting down just a little bit lower. But I wanted to show you this piece of wood because this is what we're going to end up doing, the concept of the Viking riding the horse out of this piece of wood. Now, you might be wondering why I've got this eagle here. But the concept is going to be the same. See how I got the sun carved way back at the back? It's only, gosh, three quarters of an inch thick or less. Then as I came out, the front wing is out further. So I've deep relieved more. This wing is back, which is a little out of proportion. Um, but along the way, you learn about proportion. So this is kind of the concept that I got in mind. Notice how I've sawed around this whole thing, which is exactly what I got in mind with our Viking and the horse um, thing that we're going to do. So the next time we're here in Woodcarver's Corner, I'm probably going to have my pattern that I like a little better. I'll probably draw it one more time tonight. I'm going to have it drawn on this piece of wood. And uh, then I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to try to saw it out mostly with a sawzall. I have a bandsaw, but my bandsaw ain't really big enough here um, to saw something this big out on. So I'm probably going to use either a combination of a chainsaw or a bandsaw to do a lot of my carving around the situation or cutting around on my boards. 
And uh, like I told you a minute ago, you guys, I want to take you down and show you a few examples of some Vikings that I've carved in past years. So we'll go down on a little uh, Viking tour. So get ready. Here we go. You guys, we're down here at the uh, storage building again. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys a few different examples of Vikings that I've done in the past. Um, this one I've kept, kept for myself, for myself because, because uh, uh, years, years ago, ago I, won I won several, several best, best of shows, of shows with, this with this guy. guy. He, actually he actually was on the, the cover, cover of Wood, Wood Carving Carver magazine, magazine at one time. time. And, and uh, uh, he's out he's of Butternut, Butternut Wood. Wood. And, and uh, uh, I'll show I'll you show here in the here back. In the back. He had, he had, I carved a ship back, back there with all the little, little rowing, rowing paddles, paddles and everything and back, back there. there. And, and uh, uh, I had a I good, had a time, good carving time carving him. him. Um, um, like I said, like I he's said, one, he's two, or three, three best, best of shows. shows. But, the, but other the other thing about, about this particular, particular carving, carving is, is I made a made mold, mold of, of him. him. Um, uh, I'd learned mold making, oh God, 15 years ago or so or more. And I pulled a mold off from him. And I've done a couple, two or three bronzes off from this guy. So we'll take you down to the gallery in a minute and show you one of the bronzes that we've done. Well, just wanted to show you guys this little Viking here. Uh, I'd done him, I'm going to say at least 10 years ago or so. Uh, this is Catalpa wood. And you know, the reason why I used to carve um, so much Catalpa is the fact that uh, where I was from in northeast Oklahoma down there, and I originally was from southeast Kansas, and there's just tons of Catalpa trees down in that country. The only thing is you got to find a good solid one, which if you guys have been around Catalpa very much, you'll know that Catalpa gets hollow in the middle quite often. But this was some really nice logs. This log came from down out of the um, Arkansas River bottom. And a little interesting fact about carving out, um, wood that, grew in a sandy loamy soil is man this thing would it must have picked up the silicon as a tree grew or something it, it grew in the sand and uh when i was carving it my gosh every few minutes i'm going to say every 15 20 minutes you'd have to end up buffing your tools to keep them sharp because this wood just had a an abrasive uh fact to it now I've done uh, Vikings several different ways. You might have noticed on the little bust we were just looking at, his horns turned over and out. These are more of the wing. You always hear people say, well, Vikings didn't have horns or helmets like that. Well, first of all, we have artistic license, and we will make the thing like we want to plus the fact that nobody really was around during Viking times, so, you know, it's pretty hard to say what they actually had. Um, here I've got, I've done some design on the um, shield here. i I done an armband, which I plan on our project that we're going to carve this time. I want to do a, somewhat of a bare chest like this on it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the horns, but I'm also going to do a cape on the one we're going to carve. Now this one, of course, it was a log. You guys might notice that where I'd cut with a chainsaw down through here, and then I'd went back later on and patched it. And that's called a curve cut, which a lot of these big pieces, I. You know, I used to do them big cigar store end-ends down there at Branson, Missouri all the time. 
and I would always curt cut down the back of them with the chainsaw. That way, if they did move and split, which if they're in log form, they're going to move. And so at least the crack would open up in the back, which this one has opened a little bit since I patched it, but it's in the back. And so far, thank God, nothing has happened uh, to the front of him here. But uh, anyway, the, this is uh, one of the guys I'd done. And I left his sword bridged down to the base because I knew that this was going to be one of them things that everybody's trying to get it out of his hand or tug on it or something. But I didn't want it to get broke off. Now, I did go behind some of these little ties and stuff like that. But if you guys have carved much of this catalpa, you also realize that it's mediocre carving. It's hard, soft, hard, soft grain. But yet it's a strong, pretty grain. So anyway, here's this guy. I don't think I named this one, but just wanted you guys to see this Viking. Well, I was just showing you guys uh, the wood version of this, and I had mentioned that I had pulled a mold. Uh, that winter that I'd done that, I was learning mold making. and. Um, so I made a mold, and I had done bronzes off from my original wood carvings before. But you just saw the original wood carving of this. And now this is a bronze that I had done, where you have to pour the wax. And then I did not do the bronze work. I took it over to a guy and had him pour the bronze. Um, this is off that original wood carving. And got the ship in the back, just like the wood carving. Um, it's got a just a bronzy patina on it. I, you can add color on the patinas and stuff, but I had decided to keep it more of a bronzy look to it. And so just wanted to show you guys this particular... Um, what I learned about making bronzes from my original wood carvings is if you're going to get in the bronze game, you better have some money because I've done maybe 15 different bronzes over the years. And it's just uh, you better have money because it takes money to do it. And uh, anyway, this is a bronze and I pulled the mold myself off from an original wood carving. I poured the wax myself. I chased the wax, meaning that I recarved anything on the wax, um, you know, that I wanted to fix. And then I took it over and had the bronze part poured over at Paonia at a uh, bronze foundry over there. So anyway, just wanted to show you guys this bronze from an original wood carving. I got somewhat of a pattern. You might notice a lot of scribbly lines on here because there's a lot of unsurety goes on at this stage of the game. But what I'm going to do uh, is saw out around the outside here. I'm not going to saw on the inside with, and I'm going to use the sawzall, I think. I've got everything drawn big, which takes you back to the first rule of wood carving, or any kind of carving for that matter, is you can always take more off, but you can't put it back. So, yes, I got the horse drawn big, I got the legs drawn big, I got his everything, the axe and everything drawn big. Um, down in this area, I'm so unsure what's going to happen on the back of the horse and the tail, if there's even room. I don't even know that yet. So what I'm going to do is just saw big out and around on there. And so I'm going to take you guys out here on the uh, patio of Woodcarver's Corner, and I'm going to saw just a little bit. 
You might wonder why I'm wasting so much wood up here, but I wanted to show you. There's a rot, not a rotten place, but a knot right here. And that's what this circle is. It's drawn approximately where that knot is. But the knot's going at an angle up. So my first cut that I make is going to be here to see what that knot's doing. And if I have to, I'll sand this whole, everything I got drawn off there, and draw it again for like the tenth time. But uh, anyway, we're going to go saw on this board for just a minute. I've had it for 20 years waiting for this moment to saw on this board. Well, I'm investigating this knot hole. And luckily enough, it was going up into this piece that I sawed off. And it looks like I'm getting out of it here real nicely. So I, I hated to waste... Of course, this won't go to waste. We'll carve a frog or a turtle or something out of this chunk. But uh, you can see I'm using a, a sawzall, and it is a little slow and all, but I'm just going to saw around the whole uh, pattern I got, you guys, except for down in this area. I'll probably stop where his foot and the back legs of the horse go, because I'm not sure what's going to happen there yet. Um, so anyway, that's the next step. I'm using a sawzall. I'll talk to you guys again when we get this baby sawed out. Good thing the wood stove is closed.